what, what the haters talking about. What's up, family? 53-year-old Gregory Burleson was the first to be sentenced for his role in the 2014 standoff between federal agents and supporters of Clive and Bundy near his Nevada ranch. U.S. District Court Judge Gloria Navarro did take into account his blindness and frailty. He sat in a wheelchair during the hearing. But she also reminded Burleson of his crimes, which included threatening a federal law enforcement officer, obstruction of justice, and interstate travel in aid of extortion. She said agents who hunkered down and washed while Bundy supporters trained guns on them, recorded them and shouted at them, were scarred from the experience and suffered mental trauma. That isn't something that heals over with a scab, Navarro said. You can't put it in a cast or stitch it up. The case has been watched closely as it marked another round between the federal government and those who believe public lands should be transferred to local control. Burleson's trial drew supporters from neighboring states throughout the proceedings, which ended in April, and a handful would gather outside the courthouse to monitor the developments and post updates to sympathizers on social media. But only a few showed up for Burlington's sentence at the federal courthouse in Las Vegas. They gathered outside on the sidewalk and stretched a banner across two ladders that read, Whatever It Takes, a reference to a website seeking to free Clive and Bundy. Inside the courtroom, some supporters watched the sentencing, and Burlington's mother appeared overcome as she talked quietly with his attorney, Terrence Jackson, in a corner outside of the courtroom after Navarro's sentence. He was resigned, Jackson said. He knew this was coming. While Burleson's sentence is lengthy, fellow convicted Bundy backer Todd Engel is scheduled to be sentenced in September. It was less than it could have been, as Navarro took into consideration his deteriorating health. Jackson said he will appeal and said that the sentence amounted to a life sentence for Burleson. With the reduction, it seemed to point to the federal government's spotty and difficult track record with the Bundy family in court. Last year, Prosecutors lost the case when an Oregon jury acquitted Ammon Bundy, one of Clive and Bundy's sons, and six others involved in a 2016 confrontation that centered on a 41-day occupation of the Mara National Wildlife Refuge. That standoff resulted in several pleading guilty to several charges, but Ammon and a brother Ryan Bundy were acquitted of a slate of federal felony charges. The confrontation also drew widespread attention after one man, Robert LaVar Finnecombe, was fatally shot while he attempted to avoid a roadblock set up by federal agents. The acquittal of Ammon Bundy appeared to have emboldened those who think they are entitled to cattle grazing rights on public lands without paying fees to the Bureau of Land Management and has given rise to some state lawmakers who have pushed for the transfer of federal lands to the states. The issue is especially prominent in states like Nevada and Utah, where the federal government controls 84% and 65% of the land, respectively. The 2014 standoff was triggered after federal agents rounded up Bundy's cattle they said were grazing on federal land illegally. The government says Clive and Bundy owes the government about $1 million in grazing fees. He insists he doesn't have to pay. After the cattle were corralled, Bundy supporters, many of them armed, arrived from Nevada and states near and far to protest the government action. The supporters set up a military-style camp by his ranch near Bunkerville, east of Las Vegas. The situation grew tense, but there was no violence. In the end, officials gave in and let the cattle go. Four men charged in the standoff avoided convictions after jurors were unable to reach a decision on dozens of counts. Those men, Eric Parker, O. Scott Drexler, Richard Lavillian, and Stephen Stewart, are currently being tried again in federal court. Cliven and Ammon Bundy are also set to face trial in Las Vegas once that trial is completed. Burleson has 14 days to file his intent to appeal. 
Jackson requested a prison with medical facilities to accommodate Burleson's health problems, including his blindness, a skin condition, and a battle with alcoholism. Remember when the right-wingers were passionately defending the Bundy standoff? Where are they now? Now that this guy got himself 68 years. See, this is what I'd be talking about when these groups go out here, these hate groups, they go out here and they get people all riled up to fight for their cause. Now, this guy got 60 years and the guy, Clive and Bundy, who started all of this, he free as a bird. This is what I'm talking about. They get their underlings to go out there and act a fool and do stupid stuff, and then they end up with a life sentence. Are dead. People saying that, well, there's murderers who end up with less time. Sometimes. Most of the times, murderers end up getting it. They get the full action of the law, the full weight of the law comes down on them, typically. But I catch a drift. There are times when people get off with a slap on the wrist for murdering. Sometimes they don't even get a slap on the wrist. They just straight get off. I get you. But here's the situation. These people had been illegally stealing from the American people for years. They went to court, they fought the government, they lost, they appealed, they lost, they took it to the highest court, they lost, they lost, they lost. At what point do they have to actually start following the rules like everybody else? At what point does the law apply to them like everybody else? Because I can assure you if those guys didn't have the complexion that they had, they would have all been killed. Hell, America probably would have dropped a bomb on them and wiped out that whole little old camp. Talking about a standoff. And the government relented. Where that happened at? Man, we, we go all overseas taking our dictators and killing thousands and thousands of people that don't even have nearly the amount of weaponry those guys had. But they let them make it. Only one guy gets killed trying to avoid a roadblock. Trying to go around a roadblock. That's it. So this guy who got the six to eight years, he brought it on himself. I'm just saying what any good law-abiding, decent, rational thinking American would say. Follow the law. Abide by the law, man. You're not above the law. What did the law say? And if they would have killed him, he would have deserved it. Because they gave him many, many, many opportunities. This was a situation where this man put himself at risk. So he got it. He got a six day year sentence. And they're gonna issue out a few more of them. Now, I'm gonna tell you what should have happened. They should have never let the first guy get away. They should have never let uh, the Bundy boy get away and the other people get away out, off the rip. Because all that did was embolden others to think they can do the same thing. And it just makes the job makes the job that much harder to do. This was a pretty big case. This is a big situation. Remember the people who killed the two law officers in Las Vegas at the CC's Pizza? They were at the Clive and Bundy standoff. This gives you some insight 
on the radicalization of these groups, how they're able to manipulate people to do things that they want them to do. Now, knowing this, the government, it seems, would even come down even harder on them. And I'm waiting on somebody to paint the picture of these groups as being terrorist organizations start at least I was about to say start the propaganda machine, but it really wouldn't be a propaganda machine. It would be very, very truthful, but at least report it what they are so that Americans can get riled up and we can get behind the government and we can feel like, yeah, 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 get them, get them, get them, you know, protect us, protect us. These guys are pointing guns at federal agents, threatening the lives of federal agents. Got it on film. This ain't make-believe. This is really happening. And they're allowed to live. Where they do that at? Not in America. You know how America get down. You gonna mine or else. But these guys wasn't minding. So all that did was make the other people that's got these type of ideas, this type of, that, that, operate with this type of ideology that it's cool. If they got away with it, maybe I can get away with it. So law enforcement makes their job that much harder when they let them get away with it. But we know why they let them get away with it. We all know why. I'm just coming from a good old American citizen point of view that's our land that they're out there grazing on as a taxpayer if they're going to be out there letting their cows they're letting their cattle eat off the land they need to cut a deal with me i want some of that action where my cut you know where's the american people's cut of that land that y'all eating off of y'all eating off the fat of the land where's my cut where's the american people cut where is that the government said you were wrong you went to court they said you were wrong judged by jury of your peers you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong now are we going to follow the ladder of the law are we going to follow the letter of the law all the way or we're going to follow it when it's convenient when it serves our purposes we can't have it both ways either everybody got to follow the law or nobody has to follow the law that's how it's got to be we can't have it both ways these crazed gun-toting ranchers these neo-Nazi types, these alt-right types, they are the greatest threat to American security. Make no mistake. Leave it up to them and we'll all be living in a wasteland. No more talk. What, what the mate is talking about.